Hey everyone, it's Karen. So I normally make book videos. Um, however, today I wanted to show you a prescription I am on called Ozempic and basically provide 10 tips that I kind of wish I knew or that have helped me a lot in my journey on this, just in case there's other people who are on it or thinking about being on it or their doctor has talked to them about it um, and they just want a little bit more information. So I'm actually gonna give it to myself during this video. Um, it comes with these pen caps, which is really nice. Like you don't have to buy separate needles. But anyway, my first tip is to take it on a Friday. And that obviously um, is only gonna pertain to people that don't tend to work on Saturday or Sunday, which I actually do work on Saturday tomorrow. But I would suggest taking it um, right before you're gonna have a couple days off of work. And the reason that I would recommend that um, is just because it could make you nauseous. A lot of people experience that. You can basically like live your life the way you wanna live it without a schedule or break times or anything like that. And so um, some of the other tips are easier if you're kind of on your own schedule rather on your work's schedule. And if you are gonna be sick, you're gonna be sick over the weekend. My next tip is to eat light. So today is Friday, I am going to take it. Um, but I would suggest eating light um, the day you take it and maybe a day or two after. Um, you can eat the same amount you always eat, but I would just eat in smaller increments. Done. That was it. Um, just because it kind of feels like your stomach is slowing down. And um, you just wanna make sure that you're not overstuffing your stomach and getting it like too full before you realize it's full because that food is just gonna take forever to go anywhere and it's really gonna make your symptoms a lot worse. So eat light for um, like a couple days after. My next tip is to have snacks on hand. So you kind of have to treat yourself like you're a toddler and make sure you always come prepared with snacks wherever you go. Um, the reason for me is that sometimes when I do get nauseous, it helps to eat a little something. And if I don't eat right now, then that could make me puke. Listen to your body. And there are times when you don't feel like you're hungry, you're not hungry, you're not hungry. I need to eat right now. Make sure you have snacks. My next thing is to make sure you drink lots of water and you always have water on hand too. So basically you're just coming every, in every situation you wanna come with everything you need, food, water, etc. cetera, um, just to make sure you can comfort your body and make sure that it's not going haywire and crazy while you're on this. Tip number five is to find physical activity you love. So right now I'm training for a backpacking trip and that just makes like this whole journey just feel so much better and more empowering I feel like I have something I'm striving for, something that I am trying to do, something that I have to train for or I will perish. Um, so that has made just exercise a lot more enjoyable and um, it has made me a lot more consistent with it too, which of course helps with whatever this is trying to do for you. Number six is to focus on bursts of movement. So I have recently... Um, I asked my doctor to uh, be put on a continuous glucose monitor um, just because of my backpacking trip and wanting to stay safe while I'm like in the wilderness in the UP of Michigan. Um, and what I have noticed using that, like honestly the best benefit is that it's just teaching me more about my body and stuff like that. And I have noticed how much um, just quick bursts of energy can impact your blood sugar and make such a huge difference um, in everything. So even just after dinner, not sitting down right away, but doing the dishes, cleaning up the kitchen, um, picking up the house if there's any, like that will make your blood sugar go down a lot, which I think is super cool. Just tiny things like that. Going for as many walks as possible, like even just walking can help so much. So just realizing like if you can't fit in a workout or even if you can, just try and move more throughout the day. Tip number seven, I have been having so much fun trying new recipes, just trying to make sure that I'm filling my body with everything it needs. 
um, because sometimes this allows you or <laughs> makes it so you can't really eat a ton. You want to make sure that what you're eating is really high quality and you want to just have fun with what you're eating. So it's not like you're on a diet or anything, but you're just trying new things, living your life. It's going to be amazing. The next one is to find your people. So I have found a lot of support um, through the YouTube community, um, through people with type 1 diabetes, which I don't have, but excuse me, I just feel like their support and their content has really helped me. So just try and reach out, whether it's in your real life community or online and try and find people that are kind of on a similar path and that can help you and um, can give you tips and empower you. And I think that's probably the main thing, just being empowered and feeling connected. My next point is to keep your why in mind. So like, why are, why did your doctor put you on this? Why are you trying this journey? What is your bigger reason why you're doing this? what health problems are you trying to prevent? What health problems are you trying to get better? Like what is the goal in taking this? That is really helpful as well. And then finally, stay in communication with your doctor because you can go up and down on this dosage and like your doctor just wants to know how you're doing on it because it is pretty intense. Um, so there was one time when I got pretty sick and it lasted like a few days, which was unusual for me when I was on this. And, um, <clears throat> like the doctor suggested going down to 0.25 the next week and actually you should do it the next two weeks so that your pen doesn't run out in like an awkward number or like an awkward amount left that you can't really use as a full dose but um yeah just like always be in communication so that if you need to make a tweak you can and that way you're not like suddenly going off of it because you hate it so much there are tweaks you can make that would improve things so so much if you're just uh, staying in communication with your doctor so those are 10 things I feel like I have learned since being on this I'm curious if you are also on it put in the comments what do you also want to add to this list like what have you learned what has helped you while you're on this and if you are not on it and you have any other questions or are wondering anything put those in the comments too because I want to help you guys anyway Stay tuned for more booktube content in the future, but I just did want to do an update on Ozempic. See you guys soon. Bye.